I will tell you this, that all tiredness comes from our resistance to our true self. According to A Course in Miracles, the body and time don't exist. What is sleep? And would the idea of eight hours of sleep just be a belief? In my early days of being awake, especially, I was in the throes of bliss most of the time. That's why I can say and the things I'm saying with, with experience and, and authority. And I will tell you this, that all tiredness comes from our resistance to our true self. So why we get tired and why we wear out our physical bodies is because of all the thoughts and the gyrations of the mind that cause us often to do things that are performance oriented or motivated by the ego. And so because I was able to um, let myself also in meditation, I'd find myself in states of bliss or even just taking a cat nap. Like sometimes I would take a cat nap in the afternoon. My kids were still small, especially in the very beginning I'm talking about where it was kind of like integrating this bliss into a, a life that I could actually live and be a normal um, mother and, and do things normally. And I would find at the times that I took a nap that my tongue would be glued to the top of my head, almost like, you know, feel the electricity of the, of, we were talking about this being a vertical experience because I had so much energy moving through my body and I would be like, I just plugged in and man, did I get a surge of, of grace. And I literally feel like I, I, probably didn't need to sleep at all, to tell you the truth. I would lay down and close my eyes for a few hours. And, um, but the most I slept and still sleep for many, many years is like five hours is plenty. And um, three hours was the norm for me most of the time. I will tell you that any time that I found myself in any degree of resistance to bliss, it's tiring. It's exhausting. And because especially when you know it's unnecessary, <laughs> then you're sucked into what feels like a world that does isn't connected in the way that we all can be. So I truly believe that we get tired from the resistance of, of and the disconnect from our truest selves. I know that there are many um, yogis who barely slept. And I know that's the truth because I know in my, and look, I had little kids. I had years where all I did was say, oh, I wish I could sleep the whole night because these kids are waking me up in the middle of the night. And I had years where I was exhausted and tired. And then I had all of a sudden, boom, overnight, I don't need to sleep. And it was because I wasn't resistant at all. And I will tell you this, my days, what occupied my mind during these days and what still occupies my mind in the days I, I don't need sleep, very, very little sleep, is what do you want me to do? How do I show up? How do I serve this bliss? And then it's bliss, blissful to be serving bliss. So feel how there's no resistance there and feel how your physical body doesn't need to try or strive or do things and your mind isn't getting exhausted because, oh, let me get out of this. I'll take a nap. I will tell you this, that when you're not in, in, when you're not in the throes of bliss, let's make sure we make this practical for anybody, no matter who you are and where you are listening to me now, that remember that if you are feeling tired, then you must be feeling resistance to your own best life. And you must be doing some things that make you feel disconnected enough to have to work really hard. And that is not an admonishment and that is not a judgment. It's just letting you know that it doesn't have to be so hard. 
And I can say that, you know, there have been times where, well, so for instance, I've written books and that requires a mental capacity. I've, I've gone to Harvard that requires a mental capacity. And so those are the times where my mind would, I'd be tired because I was using my mind more in a very tactical, pragmatic way. I don't, I didn't just show up and say, you know, tell me what to read now when there was a syllabus that I had to read, or I didn't, um, to get the words on the page, I noticed that it might be, unless I was completely inspired in my writing, then I would find it, well, I wasn't tired. But if it had any research, like soulful eating required me to do research. So I had to think logically and that slowed down or uh, my, I won't say slow, it does slow it down is how I would put it, feel slower because bliss is immediate, it's present, it's absolute, it's presence. Whereas thinking in any way is a slower way to um, access information or to, to connect with information. So one way, if you feel that you're exhausted all the time or tired all the time, or you feel like you definitely need eight hours of sleep plus, just notice if you're doing things that you love, if you're doing things that bring you to a sense of happiness and joy and completion. That would be going towards bliss. And if you're in a state of bliss, that's a state of non-resistance. That's a state of absolute acceptance of your truest self. So the truest self is not um, trapped in a physical body and all the limitations of a physical body. It's free and unbounded. The more we align with that, the more we tap that, the more we have a lot less of the limitations of the physical body um, holding us to anything like patterns of sleep or even eating or things like that. It shifts and changes and becomes different. So yeah, that's my answer. Eight hours of sleep. Um, I'm not going to say it's just a belief. It's necessary for anybody who's just being a normal in quotes human who thinks a lot or feels that they're working hard and striving and, and suffering and sacrificing, yes, get a lot of sleep because sleep is also the way that we let down our resistance. Every time we sleep, we get a pattern interrupt that allows for us to go into a place where we're not needing to think about things or act on things. So it's a way to refresh ourselves and to reset ourselves. But if you are someone who can sit down and move into meditation and get into a state of bliss immediately, then that would be like getting often many hours of sleep in a, in a much shorter amount of time. So I've, I've went to lectures from sleep experts, and I think the number one sleep expert was at Harvard in the, in the world. And I went to a talk that he gave at the Museum of Science here one time. And he admitted that uh, he was talking about the eight hours of sleep being very important for healthy human functioning. And again, we're talking about people who are living just normal lives and, and, and don't meditate. But then someone asked, and I was really happy because I was going to ask if someone else didn't, what about meditators? And he said, well, you know, we have some studies started, but we don't really know. Well, I was going to say, I know if you're a meditator and you're in a place that you constantly connect with that something more that replenishes and revitalizes us and is the light and the animating part of us without resistance, then you don't need as much sleep in my personal experience.